No, I, I right. love Ecamm. I just don't have a reason to use it right now. Yeah, I uh, I use it all the time. I use it for recording courses. I I use it for like this week we were starting that visual storytellers conference, and I'll be using it for presenting and just to look better on stream with lower thirds and graphics and all that stuff. So yeah, Ecamm Ecamm is the way. Ecamm is the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, uh, sorry we are we're running a little late. We um, we have, both of us had to restart our computers because we were noticing some degraded video quality. Um, but you know the universal fix to all that is what? Let's just restart. <laughs> <laughs> So we both restarted, and here we are, and it looks better. So hopefully it looks yeah. good on your side, too. Uh, anything new going on before we dive into this week's critique, Troy? The household household discussion? No, you got a new toy in. <laughs> Is it handy? You got it at art? Yes, Let's of bring course it it's handy. Oh it's my right God. here. Look at that. Yeah, I, got the, I got the new uh, 24 to 120, and... Um, I am very impressed. I am very impressed. I also added the, this right here is, they call it like the WR11 or whatever, and it's the wireless transmitter. Mm -hmm. So you can use their wireless remote with it, but what this does, it controls the strobes. I'm going to so, go on on a limb and say that that thing should be built in. That should not be hanging off of the body. Beautiful, messing up that beautiful aesthetic. You got that, that appendage on there. That thing should be built into the body. As... I, I imagine that there is some design engineer somewhere that designed this body and was super proud of it. And then they go, oh, yeah, we're going to hang this, this <laughs> lip -lip thing off the side. Exactly. Or there's some guy that can't speak up for himself that's in charge of that device that he's too quiet in meetings. You're like, uh, should we put the wireless thing? Oh, we'll get to that later, Sam. It's OK. You know, and then they never get to it. And now it's stuck on there well, like an appendage. It's it's my biggest pet peeve because like on the this like this is the Z6, so it, it they you have to connect it into the side right and and it sticks out like this far, mm. and yeah. I and the Z and the Z9 has built in all this built in amazing Wi Fi. It's got a built in GPS. It's got a built in built in, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well there's room for that in the Z10. There you go. <laughs> so we'll see it. We made room. You know what? Uh, before we start, is uh, you know, as I, you know, I've taken my my Z62 out, which I love uh, several times over the past couple of days, shooting with it, getting to know it, and I don't know if you found this, Troy Miller, but one, of, and I don't know if this is an artifact of me having shot with Lumix so long, and I'm still getting to know the muscle memory of coming back over or adding the Nikon to my arsenal along with Lumix, but it, um, the lens release button on the left side of the lens is too prominent i mean it sticks out like it's a function button and i've been hitting it unknowing that i'm hitting it and and releasing the lens a little bit and one time it actually came off because <laughs> i'm like oh no that's not a function button and i go out and find the function because it should be like l like not as easy to hit and have a face a safeguard in there, but it's big and right there, right next to my left, right next to my finger. So um, that's just you. Uh, yeah, yeah I, it honestly, must be. and I'm not I'm not I'm not picking on you, but no, seriously, I think that um, having shot with Nikon for so long, as anybody who shoots with their cameras for a long time, they're they're used to where the buttons are. Yeah, yeah, and. I love it. I to me, to me, I I like right where it's. I use it all the time from from different. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking. I think it would make a hundred percent sense for someone who's running and gunning and switching lenses all the time because you just want it right there. Boom, switch, put it. You know. But if you're not yeah. switching all the time, then it's like, why is this thing so big right there? It's right there, and it is. It is a big. It is a big thing. But I actually take it off this way, so I actually hit it with with my right hand. So that's uh, how I take the lens okay. off. Yeah. Okay. So I take I take everything. Or if it's a big lens, I grab it like this, and see my finger is right there. So if they mm -hmm. were to move it or make it smaller, I'd be upset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's all subjectivity. We talk about that a lot in the community. Subjectivity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is muscle memory and getting to know your gear and all that stuff. But that's just one yeah. of the first things that I noticed. Like I was moving it. It's back there. 
I moved it this morning and I'm like, why is my lens loose? Here we go again. You know, I hit that button and the lens was a jar. It wasn't off. It was just slightly rotated so that if you grab it, it would come off easily, which is, you know, I got to get used to it because that, that could be catastrophic. Oh, it is. And, and that's that's one of my biggest advices for anybody. Advices. My biggest advice my <laughs> for anybody that's that's looking at new cameras or even if you've owned a camera for a long time is, you know, you need to be intimate with it. You need to be able to figure out how to find buttons and do stuff in the dark. Yeah. Um, whether you're a pro or an amateur, if you want to up your your ability to capture images, like you need to be able to know, like two clicks to the right is gonna, you know, change my aperture this much, and I'm already at f4, so that puts me at, you know, like you need to be able to do that, and it's yeah. it takes a lot of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's a thing, right? It's a it's like a warrior complaining about his sword. You know, it'd be perfect if this little grip didn't have. You, know, you just gotta you gotta get used to hey, the. Then you go to the then you go to the guy and you're like. Make me a new sword. Here's what I right. want. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Next time I have a sword made, I'm getting this fixed. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, are you ready to dive in to the critique? Yeah. We've got we've got a couple of our community members in here watching us chit chat about stuff that they probably don't care about. La Dudarina's in here. Stephen Sharp. <laughs> James Glinny's in there. Nora. What up, Nora? Jim Peters. Hey. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for stopping by for the live recording of the critique. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. what you guys probably don't know is that this is what what, what uh, Frederick and I talk about normally before we would do the pre-recording. Sometimes we would get on and we would talk for an hour about stuff and be like, "Oh crap, we better record." <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, let me hit the let me hit the stream button now. You're right. <laughs> yeah. You know, again, full circle back to Ecam. Ecam makes it so easy now to go live. You know. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. You get that flow of consciousness. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and share. I'm going to go ahead and share the community here. Uh, let's see. Let's bring this up. Here we are. We are inside of TWIP, the TWIP community. In the circle. We're in the circle. Getting the, I'm getting the sniffles. I do not know why. I think I have my mute button closed. <laughs> so I can sneeze when I need to. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right, mute button is ready. All right, here we are inside the community. I'm going to go into photo talk or uh, photo critiques, rather. Here we are, household. All right, you guys can see how fast or slow my internet connection is. All right, so first one up is Peter Levshin, three days ago. China has these in every household, he says. All right. Yep, this is Peter. Peter running Very around nice. China. Yeah, I like Very this. Nice. This is I, this is that pattern interrupted. It it is a little bit. Yeah, I mean the fact that you got that one bike sitting there that's white is really cool. I wonder. You know, this, I always think to myself like, is this a scene that you just walked up on and went, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Everybody get out of my way. Or was there a white bike sitting off to the side and you're like, oh, if that was in there. Right. I think it's yeah. justified either way, um, you know, that, that you get the shot. So so I really I really do like this. Um, my only my only suggestion is is to make it even just that much better is to get rid of that watermark on the concrete. And I know that from a photojournalistic point of view, you wouldn't want to do that. But that thing just <clears throat> just bugs the crap out of me. Yeah. You know, what the, a, what? What 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 bugs the crap out of you? What, what I missed that. What would you take out? Uh, the water, the big water splotch on the ground right there. I just mm -hmm. wish that that was that was gone. However, I mean it sort of adds to the mood. But I'm just thinking, you know, from from like a print comp point of view, which is my brain's been saturated in. I'd be like, mm -hmm. Ooh, if that was out, that would be even better. Um, but all in all, I love the image. I, I wish the blacks weren't so muted in the rest of the bikes. I kind of wish there was a little bit more detail in those. But I get the I get what he's doing and I like I like the look. Yeah. Yeah. The first thing I I, I, I like this a lot. I like the, the fact that I like the composition, you know, the diagonal in there and the leading line from the the vanishing point diagonally to the lead you to the, right. the, the light colored bike. We're assuming it's white, but whatever color it was. Um, in the foreground, uh, I think if if I could change anything about this image, 
I think the only thing that I would change, I would even leave this little oil spot in there, right down here. I even, I even like that, mm -hmm. whatever that is. I like that because it adds to the whole grunginess of the scene. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like I want this bike like here, like maybe three bikes in, you know, not on the end. For some reason, I want it in there, okay. like all these black bikes and then one that's right close to the end, close to the rule of thirds yeah. intersection. But, you know, black bikes in front of it. So it's standing out, but it's still part of, part of the crowd. I don't know. That's the only that's the only thing. But I yeah, like I it. guess the lesson I guess the lesson from that is, is that, um, you know, you walk into a scene and you see what would be ideal, like you pre visualize what's ideal and then you create what the best you can from what you're given. Right. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if you just walked up on this and, and you're like, oh, God, this is so great. Like I have this bike there, like I'm going to pick the angle and I'm going to shoot down the row and it'd be cool if the bike was in there. Um, but if you can't, that's OK, because at least you thought about it and maybe that helped you choose the perspective that you wanted to be or it might help you find it next time. You yeah. know, so mm -hmm. having pre visualizing and having those shots in your head is, is always a really good, a really good idea. So. So what do you think of the uh, the non symmetrical border treatment? <laughs> how how long how long did it take? Uh, <laughs> I was waiting on you to bring it up. You know, I don't know. It, it could be you know the Polaroid treatment, the horizontal Polaroid treatment. Who knows? No, I mean I think that you know if if anybody's watching any of the, like the print comp stuff or the the recordings that we did for image competition, um, this is a very classical image competition style presentation where you leave a little bit more space in the matting to give a mm. sense of space on that side of the frame, it, oh. it, especially even if there wasn't space on that side of the frame. So it moves your subject into the image frame more, so it gives you a, a better composition. So I yeah, it's nice. Not it's a very that. nice treatment. I did not mm -hmm. know that. I you know, as a as a layman, image competition layman or, or novice, that just looks like why is that space over there? You know, that's what my, my brain wants symmetry. So I'm thinking, why is that I didn't think about it from a competition compositional element that you could use to and that's another thing. I mean, you should do a whole thing on these border things that we joke about all the time. Because it is a true okay. compositional element, right? And okay. and Peter's showing it here. He's using it as a compositional element versus just a finishing element, right? Right, right. And I did do a whole program. It's it's hasn't been out very long. It's on um it's on IEPPV's YouTube channel. So that's the letters IEPPV and there's three image competition recordings there. They're, they're maybe not significant for everybody, but the third, the part three, is one where I go over how to create a key line and how to do this. And I talk a little bit about why I might set stuff off center um, within a mat. And there, I have a photographer friend that does gallery showings, and he'll take an image like this, he'll print it on a 30 by 40, black background and he'll take this image and he'll make it like 16 by 20 or 11 by 14 and he'll shove it into one corner of the big black space hmm. and it sounds weird right it sounds like what why would you do that mm -hmm. but it 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 makes you stare into this space and then the image is like sitting in there it's really cool it's really hmm. cool so it's just a different way of looking at at your images and stuff interesting interesting all right well Hey, learn something new every day. Had no idea. Very cool. All right. Thank you, Peter Levshin, for that. And next up is Rick. Rick says, chores came to mind. Laundry being one of the most taxing chores, especially when the dreaded sock monster. Is, yeah, of course. They only eat one sock. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is creative. This is creative. What would you, what, if anything, would you have done differently with this shot? Um, first of all, big kudos for putting this together. I think that this takes a lot of work. This takes a lot of time. Um, the inside of this, uh, barrel is obviously very reflective with the paint and everything. And he handled that really well. Um, his face is nice and sharp. It's even well lit. I like the shadow and the window light. So all of that, I mean, kudos, like that's a lot of work and, um, handled very, very, very well. So I really enjoy that. My my suggestion for this image is to uh, dodge or burn down rather the outside edges of the light on the inside of the barrel so that your subject 
uh, Michael, for example, would stand out more. So make it feel more like a darker space that the camera is sitting in looking out into light. And that would just be a matter of, you know, burning the outside edges down, bring those highlights down, you know, and bring our bringing our focus to our to our subject. Did we lose you? I'm muted. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Oh, I was thinking okay. the same. <laughs> I was listening. I, I was I was looking and I was like, why is Troy making that funny face over there? He's looking like <laughs> <laughs> uh no, what I was saying, I was saying I agree uh with that, you know, darkening. Because we always say light, you know, I eyes go to the lightest part of the image and that becomes your subject, uh, much to the the challenging of some people in the chat. You know who you are. Um, but the, uh, what I was thinking also was, wouldn't it be cool if, because he's illustrating the look from inside or the sock eye view from inside the dryer or washing machine, wouldn't it be cool to just kind of cock this to the side a little bit, you know, instead of having it, having Rick be perfectly vertical in the frame, have him at a diagonal. So you still have this circular symmetrical shape in there, but he's either to the side or sideways or diagonal, even upside down or something in the frame, you know, just to give it that, the, the, to sell that this thing rotates and it is in right. mid rotation or something. But yeah, cool. Cool. Yeah. This is a lot of work. Yeah, this is, this is great. Yeah. Definitely go back and play with that and, and good job on doing that. I, I said Michael, but it's, it's Rick, right? Yeah, it's Rick. Yeah. It's Rick. Sorry. Thank you, Rick. All right. Up next is Nora. Nora's in the chat. Nora says, farmhouse kitchen, living room, main living area, and a tr traditional Bhutanese farmhouse. Every now and then when the TV image went really wonky, a little boy would hit the side of the TV, reminding me of pre-digital days. Yes. Any rabbit ears on there? I don't know. Yep. There you go. Look at this. This looks like a, almost like a Norman Rockwell kind of shot, doesn't it? This like I, a diorama almost. I... I just absolutely love this image so much. Um, this is, you know, this is one of those images that I just want to spend a lot of time looking at. And I did, by the way, I, I looked at this image and I zoomed in and I looked at all the stuff on the counter. I looked at the photos. <laughs> looking for I Easter looked... eggs. <laughs> well, I mean, this is, this is in, this is somebody's home. It's in a very non-traditional sense for us, right? This yeah. is not something that, that is normal for us to see. Yeah. Um, it's like, I want to know what that green stuff is hanging on the ceiling. I have no idea what that is or why it's there. Um, and had, had Nora not put in the, um, the description that this was a traditional Bhutanese farmhouse, uh, you know, kitchen, living room. I, I would have thought that this was like some kind of store that I would see at like Bodhi, right? Like mm. some ghost town or something. And I, I, I didn't, I wouldn't know. Right. So yeah, yeah. I, I just really love this. And I, and I appreciate the fact that, that Nora, you know, has this and saw this and took this, um, as a, as, as a sense of like, how do we improve this image or what could we do differently with this image? Um, a couple things, one, I would have knelt down to get down to the kids, the kids level if I could, uh, if that if that TV wouldn't be too disruptive with his head intersecting it, because I think it would have been fun to be down to his level. Um, and then <clears throat> if that wasn't possible, taking the image that we have in front of us, I would just burn down some of the highlights on the like the cabinet, not the doorway, because I love the light coming in from the left. But just that cabinet, the center is a little hot for me. Oh, the so cabinet with, with all these, with all the, the items in it or not the one with the TV yeah. on it? Okay, over here. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. Not the one with the TV on it. I like the light over there because that tells me that's where the door is and that's mm -hmm. where the opening is. And I feel a sense of space because of that. Um, but I think to the right, the cabinet on the right at the bottom, it's very bright right there. And uh, I think that would be great to have that burned in and bring some of that detail in if it's there. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. This is this is this is a uh, an Easter egg hunt of an image, right? Because it makes you want to zoom in to, especially after you know this is this is real. This is not a, you know, this is not for normally public consumption. So Nora somehow got in here to get this shot. It makes you want to zoom in to to get a 
a feel for how Bhutanese people actually live and what is it what does it look like right and Nora got us right. in here right right and then you know I hope that there's more images in here you know um that that you've taken like this the, in in this kind of space you know the way that I look at a space like this is like I'm like oh man I'm gonna start taking what I call my safety shots which are where I'm standing what I can get right now and then I would look to move around the room you know put things try to create some depth uh put things in foregrounds get a little bit lower shoot across the floor you know I would start to do all those kind of things mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's a fun shot and I love the colors too it, it feels it feels in place right because we always say should this be would this be better better in black and white absolutely not on this shot because it it feels right. Like I'm in there, I can almost kind of feel the, the the temperature and the whatever smells were there. It just it brings you brings you into the scene. It's very warm and inviting. Right, right, and because because everything is the same tone, um, if you took the if you took the color out, everything would blend together. You, you would mm -hmm. just you'd have this muddled mess. I mean, you would have to go in and manually you know dodge and burn things to kind of bring them out. And the color in this one really creates separation, um, which I think is great. And if you're not really paying attention, right, if you're just sort of looking at the image from a distance, um, you don't even see the little boy standing there, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. he's so small, but then you're like, oh, <laughs> There's, he's watching cartoons. Like, yeah, kids are kids everywhere. Yeah, that's right. I mean, hey, I watch cartoons. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, animation. Sorry, animation. <laughs> no, it's totally is... cartoons. Yeah, it is. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, very good, Nora. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this. I'd love to see more from that trip because it looks like a, a really interesting interesting trip that you went on. And um, yeah. La Dude Arena in the chat says Bhutan is a photography paradise. Yeah, it looks like it, you know, from this one shot. Yeah, this, uh, you know, this reminds me of like, you know, Peter and I'm sure like, you know, with Nora and whoever else has traveled, you know, into these places. I mean, every time Peter brings up an image, he has a story behind one of these images and it's just fascinating. I mean, the story is almost as fascinating as the, as the photograph. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's what we do. We capture memories. All right, Nora. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Up next is Karen Sweeney, a La Duna Arena. Uh, Karen says if, uh, a household without fresh garlic does not possess a cook. Rejected by Shutterstock due to the subject being out of focus. The garlic is the subject, not the ceramic. Parts of the ceramic were left soft on purpose. Discuss. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, this is really nice. You know, the first thing that I that I saw about this was the handmade pottery. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I was like, did. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a garlic jar. I make these. Um, these are pretty cool. Um so Karen, yeah, for me, I think that uh, the challenge is r right away, right away, I thought the same thing. I'm like, man, I wish that lid was in focus. And only because the lid is in front. Yeah. I think that the front of the jar or the bowl and the garlic should be in focus. If you want to create some depth, you could have something in the background that goes out of focus. But I think because the, the lid is in front and it's really kind of the dominant you know, character here. That's why I feel like it might want to be in focus, right? Um, I think it does detract from the garlic if that's your intent. So I would say move the jar into the background uh, in, in some way, you know. Yeah. But I love the yeah. shot. I think, it's, I think it's a really well done shot. It's lit really nice. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. So I was thinking uh, the out of focus thing. So yeah, I, I agree with that. But if the garlic is the subject of this, then and the lid is not so much the subject it's a supporting character as we say then i probably would have punched in a little bit on this so maybe a crop like this because you don't necessarily need to see the entirety of the lid unless that's part of the story that you're telling in which case the lid should be in focus um, but if it's not and you want it to be out of focus in order to draw attention to the garlic within this the ceramic here then a nice crop kind of like that would sell that, okay, this is handmade pottery, uh, and I want you to look at this stuff in here, not not the the craftsmanship of the pot itself. So right. this is one and, way to look at and, 
Yeah. And Karen, you know, one, one thing that I might, cons you know, want to suggest is that if you're going to, you know, submit this to Shutterstock or something like that, think about the use case, think about how somebody's going to use this. And, you know, an image like this, it's hard, it's hard to use because of where they're going to put the text. What, what story is this telling? Um, think about like putting this in the situation of like a cook, right? Like this is sitting off to the side. He's got all his cooking utensils out. You've got, you know, or maybe it's on a, on a, on a kitchen counter and there's a knife and there's a cutting board and all those things become very, very background secondary. And then this is opened and that's the shot that you take, right? And it has that space so it can be used in a number of different generic conversations about kitchen or kitchenware or utensils or utility or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, what about color? Yeah. What about color on this? Um, not knowing, not knowing what the colors are. Um, right now, all the tones are the same. And that's a really, that's a really tough thing to do with black and white is that, um, you have to make sure that there is tonality and separation throughout the image to create depth and focus. And some, sometimes color does that for us. So without knowing the color of this jar, I can't tell you, you know, if this, if yep. this jar was uh, blue or maybe the, maybe it's brown with like blue decoration, that would be more distracting than helpful. Right. But if yep. it's a tan and those are black lines, the garlic itself is like a warm tone. It's a yellow, it's a light white. That might not be a bad thing to keep a color, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. you're submitting it to Shutterstock, it, they can always make it black and white if they want to, but yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's, yeah. And you're right. I mean, like Karen said, the, the, the topic of this was the subject was the garlic. So if it is, if that's mm -hmm. the subject, then I need to see a little bit of I need to see some color in there so that I know it's garlic and not onion or, you know, that thing. Karen has a, she made a comment in here and she says, if I can bring it up, it won't let me add it to the, oh, there it goes. Uh, color wouldn't have worked too well as a ceramic, ceramic was a similar color to the garlic cloves. Okay. Yeah. Well, so in that yeah. case, Troy, would you, and this is, again, everything we talk about is subjective, right? So would you... If again, Karen says the subject of this was the garlic, but the the colors of the ceramic were too similar in color to the garlic cloves, would you then use your Photoshop or in Karen's case, Affinity superpowers to go in there and change the color so that there's more contrast or 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 is that out of bounds? And if you did that and you were to submit this for competition or something, would that would that get a ding? No, it's it's absolutely acceptable. I mean, okay. make the image, make it whatever, make it whatever you want. Um, so pixels, it's not right? photojournalism. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely lean into it. Um, I, I would say, you know, this is one of those kind of subjects that you have infinite control over. And if you have in your mind, like, I want to photograph the garlic and I want to put it in a space that really highlights the garlic itself. And th this could be anything, right, from a human to a mountain to a pet. Like, think about the space you want them to be in and then build the environment around it so that they stand out, so that it's yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Cool shot. Household. Definitely Household. in the household. Uh, and clearly I am not a chef because I don't have fresh garlic in the house right now. <laughs> I feel like, uh, do, you have, do you have fresh garlic in the house, Troy? Dude, so much. Oh, God. Oh, I'm so I don't, and I don't cook, but um, Margie does. And so she's got a giant garlic jar sitting on her counter uh, full of garlic all the time. Uh, yeah. Garlic jar made by me, by the way. Yeah, I made the garlic jar. Of course you did. Of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to share a picture of that, you know, in homage to Karen's shot. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Karen, sweetie. Appreciate that. Next up is James Glenny. Sundays in my household, nothing like home-brewed espresso and fresh macaroons to start the day. Nice. Look at that. Nice. Love the makes you, love makes you the want color it. Color <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Except for the coffee. <laughs> I don't want the coffee. Oh, what's the matter with you, man? What is the matter with you? <laughs> How do you uh, get caffeinated? What where is your source of caffeine? Tea. I drink oh. tea. 
Okay, that's what yeah. I'm drinking now. So yeah, okay. I love my I love my tea. Love me some tea. Um, uh, you're very welcome, Karen. You're very welcome. Um, so James, I I love your shot. I love the color harmony. I love what you're doing here. Um, you make it look very delicious. Uh, in you know in a shot like this, we can always get picky because it's very commercial esque. But just a couple things is it feels like it's rotated clockwise. So I think that uh, counterclockwise would, would help. It feels like the cup is tilted to the right. Oh, yeah, a little bit. And um, I wish the whole macaroon was in focus. It's it's soft. So I think that it would be... <laughs> James says, I'll drink Troy's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're welcome to, to, to give you some inside baseball. So Margie is a coffee drinker. And she has a. I bought her a coffee subscription from the co from uh, I can't think of what it's called, but she gets like a pound of coffee every month, some specialized coffee. And I drink tea, and I get tea every month. Oh god! <laughs> and and it was and it was great as we don't we don't get in each other's stash, so <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it's by good. design, right? You're just like, well, it's safe. It's safe in this house. Yeah, so so James, I think that I, I wish that the, the whole macaroon was in focus because I feel like that's your subject and that's really the hero here. Um and then you have and then you have your coffee, you know. So um and my only other my only other thought, and I'm wondering, Frederick, if if this bothers you or not, is that I feel like the cup in the back left corner is mirroring the cup in the foreground, and I yeah. wish that it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It needs you know, to be positioned differently. Well, it is positioned differently because the macaroon is in a different spot versus the positioning of the handle. So we could see that, but it is very close at first glance. At first glance, I did think that was a mirror. I thought it was a mirror image and then I had to, oh, it's not a mirror image, but something more obvious. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I think that I think that you could have you could have left less handle and just taken the macaroon out in the back. And I think that I think that would have worked really well because then I would have thought, oh, somebody else is sitting with them. And the but because you have that macaroon and you have the color and it's on the edge of the frame and it's cut off, I, I keep looking there and I'm like, oh, why? What is what is going on? Like, oh, no, this is my subject. So I feel it's a bit a bit distracting. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about this, too? As I was looking at this image and I've seen this, uh, I don't know if it's a trope or if it's a, a design element or what the difference is. Um, but I've seen a sh very clean shot like this. Like this is very clean, very almost clinical, right? In, in how it is. But then I've, I've seen people purposely add a bit of detritus in there to break up the, the, you know, the cleanliness of the image, like a few crumbs from the macaroon or some crumbs of sugar or something on that, on, on this area down here, you know, or something like that. Would that... What do you think? Would that add interest or would it overcomplicate the image? I, I think that it would add interest <clears throat> if it was contextually correct. So yeah. if there was a bite out of the macaroon and, mm. you know, you wanted to show that and there was a, a napkin there, you know, in context. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that would be that would be super cool. Um, in this case, I don't think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't mm -hmm. think that that we need to do that in this case. I think this is a very clean you know, intentional image and I, and I really like it, you know, just the way it is. So yeah, yeah I don't yep. think we need to, I don't think I need to do that. So the major things just to, just to wrap it up on this one, the major things that you would change are, um, make the, the background cup and macaroon more different so that it doesn't appear at first glance to be a mirror and rotate counterclockwise slightly so that it appears a little straighter. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. Cool shot. Very cool. Yeah. And I, and I'm trying, <laughs> this is so funny. I haven't been an Instagram in forever. So I'm trying to jump on Instagram really quick and find uh, a food photographer that I used to follow. And so I can share it with you guys because their food photography is absolutely amazing. And I couldn't remember how to find out who I'm following. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Yeah computers tend to need like accurate variables like that in order to do their things so. yeah yeah i've just been on an instagram <clears throat> hiatus for a couple of years and i hear you i'm not i'm not hating it i just uh i can't remember the name of this artist that i was following and her and her food photography was exquisite 
Right. So I will definitely, I will definitely find it though. Uh, well, yeah, I was Stephen. Thank you. I was trying to remember Aaron Ng's name. Uh, Aaron Ng is a food photographer we've had on the show. So she's a San Francisco-based food photographer. So maybe she's it. Uh, oh, James yeah. says great suggestions. Thanks. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Thanks for sharing the image. All right, moving right along. Craig Stampfley from Down Under, my home for the next four days in Moranbaugh, Queensland. Queensland. Yeah, I'm guessing nice. because of the flooding down there, this is temporary housing. God, man, jeez. <laughs> I don't think so. I think he's going to work somewhere. You think so? Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I but I, but I don't know. Maybe maybe he is. Maybe he's just bought himself a little vacation home or something like that. Maybe. Yeah. Or is this what Motel Six look like down under? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a little, everything's a little bit more rugged down there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I like um, the symmetry and the vanishing point of this one. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you know, there's little things that I would change, but nothing big. Like over on this left side here, this little tree here, I don't know if that bothers me or not because it's it's balanced by this one. On this side, I like the overall balance of the whole thing with the trash can to kind of offset it and add kind of that disrupting the pattern interest and weight on this side. So I like that. But then these lines at the top bother me for some reason i don't know i don't know if they're like that or if because this is vertical the the image itself looks like it's correct it, it's horizontal but then these lines are not up there so that's got to be an architectural thing i don't know what do, what do you think well yeah it, it probably that roof is probably tilted because you can see down at the end of the at the end of the hallway right or whatever mm -hmm. that tunnel you can see there's a there's another roof that looks to be correctly horizontal. So um, in this case, because all the verticals are vertical all the way down, it, it feels right. And the line in the concrete <clears throat> in the sidewalk is looks correctly horizontal. So mm -hmm. that tells me that the roof is tilted, which is which is, you know, which is totally fine. Um, I do like this. I think I think this is a really a really fun image. I, what I would probably do is uh, burn the outside edges of this image to kind of force me into the center more. I feel like the foreground, the edges are brighter than the middle. It gets a little darker and then the distance, it's brighter. I would burn down the foreground edges to draw my my way into the image more into that space. The sense of like, oh, I want to walk down there and see what's going on down there. Mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but other than that i mean i think it's i think it's really cool i really yeah. i really like the way it, yeah yeah uh, a bride would look great right down there where the light's coming in from the right <laughs> would be the perfect oh, right in here right in that area yeah yeah that would be the perfect place that would be the perfect place to put it yeah so yeah you just called a bride an it you realize this <laughs> 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 let's put it let's put it down there <laughs> okay to be fair i was critiquing an image and finding a link at the same time so brides <laughs> excuse <Sorry>. me <laughs> i'm like joking over He's, here you can't breathe now i can't breathe oh my god yeah let's put it, it down there <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> That's all right. It's That's all right. Good. Sure. No, You're born in a different no. era. We get it. It's okay. Put oh, my wonderful <laughs> human down there at the end. Yeah. You my can't subject. clean it up now. You're now I know. To clean it up. <laughs> backpedal. You can't backpedal. <laughs> oh man. Oh god. Uh, I wonder. I wonder when it's going to come up at a shoot. I'll be at a shoot. <laughs> Yeah, you are. You're, you're gonna be at a shoot. You're gonna be at a shoot, and you're like, "By the way, Troy, I saw that critique. I'm not a yeah. thing. I'm person." <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. That was a slip of the tongue. <laughs> That's fair. That's yeah. totally fair. That's yeah. good. Yep. <laughs> All right, Raphael Swift is up next, uh, aka Timber Geek. He says, an impromptu still life captured in my mother's kitchen this past summer with the Wii D5500 and 1855 kit lens at 21 millimeters. Let's take a look. Nice, look some more custom pottery. Love yeah, it. you love that pottery. Oh, I do. I do. I, it, you know, for anybody, any, any creative that has that likes to work with their hands. And I think we're all pretty creative. Um, if you haven't done pottery, find yourself a studio and go spend time there. 
it's it's so it's such a wonderful process. I won't go into it, but it really has helped me in my photography as well. Um, it 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 helps me pre visualize, right? Like really think my way through. So it's worth playing with. It's worth playing with. So anyway, two timber geeks image. Um, I love the I love the idea that you have going on here, and I, it's it's something that I think we can all read and understand what's going on. Uh, for me, the challenge is, is, is both subjects have the same amount of attention. They have mm -hmm. the same focus, not focus as in focus, but focus as in where my eyes are drawn. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have that hot spot in the upper right hand corner. So, you know, this is, this is one of those kind of shots where I probably would have flipped this around, put the, put the tea bowl forward and then rotated the fruit bowl away and then i would have come in closer and i would have shot into the bowl with the with the foreground and then the background would have been the plate with some fruit on it right so trying to create that depth by position mm -hmm. you know um th this may also be an image that that you can get away with uh making black and white and then really just do some heavy dodging and burning because there's just so many wonderful shapes in this, right? You just got those, the orange and the apple or pear, um, and then you've got the curve of the plate, and then you've got the bowl, you know. Uh, this feels like very traditional still life to me, so I think you could you could really m monochromize this and um, mess with the, tone, the tones and the brightness and stuff a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is cool. I, I agree with you on the hot spot in, in this corner up here. This little blue thing in there kind of draws me in. It makes me think of what is that, that blue thing. Um, and normally we say, um, I got a sneeze that is like right behind my nose at once. <laughs> it's just gonna, it just parked itself right there. It's going to come out at exactly the wrong time. And I got my foot oh. on the mute button to catch it, but I'm going to miss it. So apologies in advance if I sneeze in your ear. Um, but you know, looking at the, the spacing around the edge of this, I'm curious what you think of, of the space down here on the lower left, uh, and the proximity of this piece of pottery to the top edge versus this edge. Is that, am I splitting hairs here or would it have been a better crop to leave equidistant space here and here and maybe crop this tighter so that it's, you know, you're, you're cutting off. I don't know. Uh, I'm just thinking, well, I'm thinking compositionally, you know, on the, it, the, it's a fine image. I'm just saying if we got to get down into the, the DNA and the subatomic sub particles of this image, do we move into, you know, adding space to the top and the sides to make it more balanced? I think, I think we do. I think that anytime that we take an image, we're responsible for the button press. And if we can change something in that image before we show somebody else, I think we absolutely should consider doing that, right? And so in, in a situation like this, what is your, in, instead of saying, oh, it's too close to the top, you shouldn't do that. Let's ask ourselves, why did I intentionally crop the top or place this subject so close to the top? What was my purpose? How does that serve my image? Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a good answer for that, then you have to ask yourself the next thing, well, what would have been the best way to represent this image? And, you know, in my mind, the best way to represent the image would have been give it a little bit of space, right? That yeah. would have that would have served a purpose. Like when you're when you're looking at images like this, like say it's one of your your images, I, I've heard you say in the past that you invert it to to get her get a better idea of how to place things and how it's going to translate would this image have benefited from that is inverting it to kind of get a better idea of where things are falling when you say invert are you talking about uh like the colors like making it a negative no no physically flip it upside down oh yeah yeah i absolutely would i think that if you if you flip this upside down um you would see different subject matter in the frame um, I, I think that it, it would it would show you what your eyes are drawn to, whether you want them to or not, right? And mm -hmm. so that's the goal is to see what what it is you want to draw your interest to. But you know, I just want to really lean into that idea that you know, if you're a painter and you were to paint this on canvas, 
would you have painted the bowl that close to the top of the frame? Would you have painted in that little blue spot in the top right hand corner? Would you have painted in, you know, the little dusty specks on the plate? Like, would you have painted the orange in half shadow? Or would you have pulled it out so that it would have been in, in better light? You know, mm -hmm. like, would, would you have done that on purpose? Yeah. <laughs> And that's why I don't like most of my own images because <laughs> oh. I find Karen, stuff. Karen says you looked at it upside down and saw a face, and now I see a face. I cannot not see a face now, Karen. Thank you. Oh, Appreciate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, with googly eyes. I see it. <laughs> now, but, now, I've got to wonder, how, how is it that Karen looked at it upside down so quickly? <laughs> like... Uh, she Are has we... superpowers called affinity photo <laughs> just for, or preview or anything. <laughs> I'm trying to look at it upside down now. Uh, okay. Yeah, there's definitely a face. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a face. It's a face <laughs> with an upturned lip on there. Pottery wise, looking at this, I want a set like this. I like that pottery with the kind of. Have you ever done anything like this, Troy, with the, with the yeah. curled up edge? That is really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's actually a very traditional technique that's used in in the bowls and stuff, and it makes a really good place to grip. And it's just a, it's one of those styles that a lot of people do. Yeah, that that bowl looks like it was thrown on a wheel, and then they they bow the side, they just lift it up, and they leave it there. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. cool. There's a lot of cool things you can do. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's really cool. I like those things that like look like they're purpose built for, um, or Stephen would say they're fit for purpose, right? Yeah, 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 they're very cool. All right. Uh, do I have to? Yeah, I have to do it. My OCD is kicking in on this one. Sorry. Sorry, Raphael. Yeah. I got to edit your comment here. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go in and just make that full width like that real quick for you. There you go. And you know what, uh, Frederick, I can change, I can fix those in the normal thread, like in the, in like photography, in the photo talk and the normal ones, but I can't fix them in here. So I've been going through and fixing people's posts as I look at them, <laughs> but I can't <laughs> really? do it here. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Here. Now it, now I can't, now I can't not fix it. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. It messes with you, doesn't it? I know. Welcome to my yep. world. Welcome to yep. my world. All right, let's get out of this one. Let's just go back. I think I took myself out of the chain, unless that was the last one. Let's move no, down. there's a couple more. <clears throat> All right, there was that one. Okay, good. Jim Peters, the household settles down for the evening. Let's take a look. This, you know, what this reminded me of when I first saw it before I looked at the name. Um, uh, Freddie Sedano, because Freddie Sedano, oh yeah, he's, uh, when he was active in the community, he used to do a lot of kind of toy, uh, you know, work like this. This is very reminiscent of that. I'm curious, what what do you think of this one? I, I really like it. Um, I'm I you know I'm spending a lot of time kind of looking around the image, trying to see you know where the light's coming from, and you know all those things really play into the image for me, and I can tell that. You know, <clears throat> Jim spent a lot of time uh, putting lights on the house, um, putting lights like on the back of the car, you know, like the little tail lights are lit, you know, um, you know, dodging down the outside edges so that it draws our eyes into the image and we can kind of see what's going on. <clears throat> I really like that. I think that the I think that, you know, with all of that said. I love the story. I love what he what he's done here. The only place I think that we need a little bit more light is actually on the, the kitchen table from the hanging light that the you know little kids hanging from. You know, I think in a in a in, a, in an environment that light would broadcast down on the table a little bit more. So I might I might kind of play with that. But what a great mm -hmm. story. I think it's I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I love these kind of things where, where you're telling stories with the with objects like this because it's not very not very often that we see this kind of work and that people are are doing this. I remember Renee um, in the last Renee Robin in the last um, member mixer shared that artist. Do I have it on my desktop? No. Um, she heard, shared that artist that I forget his name. I think it was last name was Hernandez, but I'll, I'll put a link in here when I find it. Uh, but that artist does miniature work like models and then crafts the models yeah you know and then photographs them with elements in there like small 
sorry, I snick a sneeze in there. Uh, like smoke. <laughs> <laughs> like smoke and all that. It's a sneeze. It's a sneeze. It's trying to is trying to sabotage the stream, but it's not gonna let it. Um, but you know that's I I love that. I love being able to control the whole world of what you're seeing versus capturing what the world presented to you. You're organizing your own version of what you want to see and every element you're responsible for at that point. So it's really really interesting. Right. 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 Exactly. All right. Bravo. bravo, sir. Bravo. All right. Next up is Phil Lewenthal. He says, fond memory. All right. Let's bring this one up. Oh, this is this is more documentary snapshot, right? Yeah, I mean it's 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 certainly um it's certainly one of those images that 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 has that doesn't really have a like a draw like a strong subject matter or you know um compositional elements or leading lines or you know those kind of things i mean this is this is really more of a uh of a, of a memory captured kind of feel you know or a documentary type image um which is which is really interesting in and of itself it's kind of like this whole still life kind of thing and i could see a series of images like this that really don't have explanation for them Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I think that they could be really kind of fun because as long as there's some kind of element in there that kind of like a secondary hook, like the fan blades, um, then they're, then they're fun to look at, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And this, I mean, these kind of shots are what photography, you know, for a lot of people was invented for is to preserve memories. And for us, we look at this shot and we're like, oh, it's like somebody about to move in or just moved out and OK, whatever, you know. Um, but for Phil, this might, like he said, fond memories, this might represent any number of things that are important to him. Like, OK, we we just bought this house that we've been trying to buy for a while and boom or Hey, this is my kid's first apartment before they moved in, you know, which is a fond memory only for them, which is completely right. valid, right? So, right. No, I think that's, I think that's really nice. And I think that, you know, without a title, it's harder to enjoy an image like this because we all look at it from a different perspective. You know, I, I come at it from the perspective of why the contractor leaves stuff on the floor, you mm -hmm. know, like because I, I used to build these kind of things. And then, <laughs> and then I'm wondering, like, why the hell is there a different blade on the fan? That just drives me <laughs> nuts. I could not live in a house. <laughs> you couldn't go in that room. I, like, I'm not no. allowed in the kitchen. <laughs> I cannot go in the kitchen. That fan is uh, evil. <laughs> it's a monk, it's a monkism. Um so I think that I think that having a title is really important. And so when you give this one the title of fond memories, now it takes me back to when I rebuilt my kitchen. And, you know, the fun that we had for two years washing our dishes in the kitchen, in the bathroom sink, you know, uh, I think that's I think that's super cool. Yeah. Uh, Ladudarine is asking, what do I think of the border? I like the border. I, you know, I always like these. I don't think that images ever look bad without them. Um, I think it's a nice I think it's a nice Which is a strong statement, by the way. That's a strong statement. I do. I do. I, I like in in this context, right? Like I know we we've talked about this for so long, but maybe somebody listening hasn't. Um not for the walls all the time, not for a finished print. That's different. But for digital, for presentation in a space like this where we're always in in circle looking at it on a white background. Mm -hmm. um make your image stand out from that and the only way to do that is to put a border on it you know put it in some kind of presentation so so i like it all right well there you go ladoon arena all right thank you phil all right stephen sharp's up next he says oris divers 1965 automatic mechanical wrist watch yeah i could see this in a catalog absolutely right right now i'm wondering how how this fits into household right i guess i guess i guess for, for like for for peter for uh for steven i guess these are this is his everyday kind of thing watches so i guess that makes sense um in in this case one of the things i really love about the way that that steven shoots these and, and i really enjoy this image is the intention to lighting and all of that. And by the way, Frederick, that's the proper placement for hands on a watch. 
just oh just really so you know yeah yeah it's At like 10 15 you know, 10 14 something like that no it's yeah it's it's a there's a very specific but you you have to move the, the hands are moved out of the way so that you can see the name of the watch that's the oh thing. so that's a thing so any oh so yeah any, that's a thing. any properly photographed wristwatch that i see will have the hands in that position or else it's wrong uh they should be yeah and and there was i can't remember like on the digital watches even when um apple came out with their first digital watches they they put the proper time on the watch so it's it's pretty cool it's pretty cool so um i i really do i really do enjoy this i think i think that for me i think that i wish that the watch was the whole body of the watch was centered in the frame um we have more space at the top and on the right and i'm not i'm not sure that 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 plays as well i think that this is one of those type of objects that you could really just take the whole body of it and put it dead center but i would play with it because it may not look as visually pleasing when you do that um mm -hmm. and watches are hard uh watches are really hard to photograph those yeah look at um, all these surfaces like this one you got glossy curved surfaces you have matte yep. surfaces you've got leather organic surfaces in there and yeah there's yeah and if you're photographing this for you know, a crowd of watch enthusiasts, they're going to notice every little tiny detail. So you, it's not like you're just photographing something where people are going to glance at it. People are going to scrutinize this shot, especially if this is a high priced item and they're thinking of getting it. They're going to zoom in at every and look at every little detail, I'm sure. Right, right. Exactly. So no, I, I, I really enjoy this. This is really wonderful. I'm, I may go in and dodge down the band in the bottom left, you know, where the buckle is. I might take mm -hmm. that down maybe like a quarter of a stop, just a little bit. Um, but again, you know, that's, that's getting nitpicky. I, I appreciate that. I can see the brush marks on the stainless steel or titanium frame, whatever that is. And that the, the face, the crystal is super clean and I can see through it, but yet I can see the edges that there's a reflection. And that's always really hard when you shoot something that's um, that has a, a reflective surface like a glass mm -hmm. is that we want to see through it because we know it's clear. But at the same time, we want to make it look like there's something actually there. So, yeah. Yeah. When I look at this kind of work, I think of uh, it gives me res more respect for folks that do the photography for places like Tiffany's Jewelers, you know, and the, the attention to detail for high priced items and how meticulous those have to be you know it, they have to be on brand for one um but also right. the attention to detail has to be through the roof i'm sure for this right. kind of stuff yeah right. steven says exactly. he's, he wears a mechanical watch every day i wear an apple watch every day except <laughs> except for the days when i'm going out with with nicole or we're with friends or something like that then i wear a traditional watch or no watch at all because I don't want the interruptions of the Apple Watch. I would like to be present. Yeah. So I wear a mechanical watch during those situations. But 90% of the time, like right now, I'm wearing an Apple Watch happily. Yep. All right. Very cool. Moving right along. Look at that. It looks, it looks good here. I like it bigger right here. Look at that. Look at the detail. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. That is really cool. <laughs> Amy. <laughs> what did Amy say? I wear underwear every day and now she, Amy, I gotta put that on screen. There you go. Amy says she, <laughs> well, you got one up on me, Amy, because uh, you know, every now and then you gotta be free. Just say it. <laughs> this does not need to go in that direction. <laughs> hey, she brought it up. I'm just I'm just augmenting. <laughs> All right, let's show more replies. Who's next? I think that was it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. All right. Do you have a uh, a favorite of the bunch? Oh, my goodness. You got to pick your favorite <sighs> child. Can I pick Nora's? You can pick whatever you want. Of course. Well, you got to pick sometimes. I pick Nora's. <laughs> hey, I'm running that. the cameras over here. I'm giving you. Uh, you are my special guest. And it is, I'm giving <laughs> you the courtesy of being able <laughs> to pick. You said that last time. I did. I totally did. Yeah, I, I, I just, I just really, I mean, I enjoy every one of them. I mean, they're all really good. We say that every time, and I don't mean that 
to be trite. I mean, I do enjoy them, but I think there's really there's really something about the storytelling in Nora's that I really love. And there's so few things that I would fix in that image, which I think is is fair to the overall critique. Um, I just yeah, I just really enjoy it. Okay, I was sharing that link in the chat. Let me bring up Nora's here. Where is it? Where is it? And I don't know if you I don't know if you guys caught it in the chat, but I did put the link in there for that Instagram photographer. Um it's called Nutmeg Nutmeg Image Works. Nutmeg dot image works. Okay. Cool. Uh check that out. Yeah. Her stuff is really, 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 really nice. And I put the uh the link in there for the miniature photographer that Renee mentioned. Hernan or Hernandez Dream Photography dot com. Is it Oh yeah, that stuff is so crazy good. Yeah. Yep. Very good. This is Nora's. Congratulations, Nora. Yeah, I agree. I like this one. I like this one a lot. I want to see more from this series, though. Yeah. Like, I want to read that article. Like, I want to see the images and I want to read the article. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Would you suggest that? It's funny you bring that up. Uh, I was having a conversation about that with a with a a photographer I was interviewing a couple days ago about photojournalism and and photography and how especially considering today's delivery medium which is nine times or ten times out of ten usually going to be digital people are going to be looking at your work on instagram or on your website in a gallery or someplace else where right. you can accompany it with other kinds of media uh vis-a-vis text would do you think and I'm putting it at you troy do you think that uh, a lot of these images would benefit from a short paragraph write up, not just a caption, you know, of, hey, this was me when I was walking through the desert or whatever, but a little a little paragraph or two story that takes us into the image, not so much how it was made, but why you made it and what was going on in that situation to give us a little bit more depth and color, you know, versus just the pixels. What, what do you think? I, I absolutely do. Um, <clears throat> I think there's two ways. Well, there's a couple ways that, that that we as humans approach an image. If we walk up to an image and there's no context, then what we do is, as you and I have done with our sci-fi bias, mm-hmm. um, we build a story around that image. And it may not have anything to do with that. And that may be the intent of the photographer, right? They may just create this thing. I've got tons of abstracty things that have no story. I just want you to make up stuff. Yeah. But then there's things that if you photograph and they have a lot of meaning to you, but contextually they don't communicate that meaning or that emotion. um, And you really want to make sure that emotion gets carried through your image. Then I think that having a title, I think that having some sort of, you know, communication go along with it. I think that's pretty important if the image can't tell you a hundred percent. Right. So, yeah, I do. I mean, you know, just a just as an example, like you could take, you know, Karen Sweeney's garlic jar. Like, let's say that that was that belonged to like her great grandmother, and it had a lot of meaning to her, and she uses it every day, and wanted to photograph that. Well, that that really changes the context of the image to me. You know, I'm less worried that that you know the lid's out of focus because I'm not thinking of it as a commercial shot. I'm thinking of this as sort of a, an emotional documentary, right? Like she's capturing that for a memory. And that that changes my relationship to the photo as well. Um, so, you know, and even like Stephen Scharf's watch, right? Like if this is just one of his favorite watches, but not his favorite, and he wears it on occasion. Um, OK, that's great. But let's say that this was a gift or this was handed down to him or whatever, whatever. It has some more emotional attachment. Well, I would like to know that so I can participate in that with that maker, you yeah. know, so. Yeah. Yeah, because looking at this watch right now, looking at it on its merits, we looked at it on its, you know, photographic and and technical merits of of image making. Um, But and it's excellent. Right. So but wouldn't it be cool if it was there was a story of, yeah, this was my grandfather's watch and he carried it through the war and this and that, you know, that that would be, you know, that would add another element to it and another element of excellence to the to the image, especially and considering we have the ability to do multimedia, right? So this could be, yeah. that could be a narrative in the artist's voice. I really wish that that there was a super easy way that we could attach, you know, a quick video or audio clip behind an image where it would just, it was normal that we could just hover over that image 
and hear what the maker had to say. Yeah. You know, I think I think that would be just just wonderful if if they wanted to. Right now, right now, I know the technology is is not right really there for us. Right, we just yeah. we don't really have that ability, um, and we have to write things out and we have to type out text, and it's just not as easy. So, you know, so to your have answer, you? yes. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you: Have you uh, played with the, or have you ever used the feature on your Nikon cameras of recording voice captions? I I haven't. I huh. and I I don't even know how that works. To be honest with you, I have never tried. I've never even. It works tried great. It. Like, it works great. Is when you, while you're reviewing an image, uh, you know, in in playback mode. At least on the Z6, you hold down the information button and it goes into record mode and you just speak and it records a WAV file that sits that's named the same as the image file. So it sits right next to it and software like Lightroom can see that. And there you go. You have audio with a little microphone next to your image. So I don't know when I would use that. You know, I don't know. You know, it'd be it'd be interesting to to speak with someone who uses it religiously. But it's there. I, I am, I am a huge fan of the idea that we should be archiving our experiences as humans. Um, and I mean, not just in photos, but in words that can tell our stories because, you know, we've all lost loved ones. We all have family members and, and the people that we don't know that we don't know that had stories that we'll never hear. I, I wish that there was a better way we could communicate that just globally. I, I just, we share so many images that it just becomes this detritus of pixels that we just tend to scroll through really fast. I want more story. I want more depth. I think that should be the title of a book, Troy Miller. The detritus of pixels. <laughs> That's the title. <laughs> That's the title. The the downfall of photography in in the, in the new age. I, I so realize this is, this is dragging on. Um, but I was reading an article about you know the plastic problem that we have globally, and I mm -hmm. thought, oh my gosh, like we have a pixel problem. We have too many pixels. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere which makes no pixels valuable anymore, right? Yes, like there's yes. just, you know, and you have this this big collection of plastic out in the ocean. That's a problem we need to fix. But then we have websites where we have this big collection of images that just because there's so much, no other images ever get seen. And it just kind of it just becomes noise, you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like they, what was it in The Incredibles? When everyone has superpowers, no one does, right? <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you remember that uh yeah that's before true. we break karen we were talking about stories uh karen says a previous occupant of this flat left the jar i liked it so i kept it so that's a that's the story behind that one and then oh my god yeah which is cool now that's I a wanted, cool story now and i want then, to know karen is the bottom of that jar signed like does it have somebody's signature on it so there that you would go. tell us even more and Steven said uh, the story behind that watch was issued as one of 150 by Osiris or Oris, sorry, Oris in collaboration with Topper Jewelers in the Bay Area. Yeah, see, I want to know more about it than just, you know, yeah. that it's yeah. it was one of 150. I want, I want a story that's like, I found this and it looked amazing. <laughs> or I saw it in a pawn shop and the guy had no idea what he had. So I bought it for 10 bucks and had it restored. And this is what it was. Now it's worth $20 million, something like that. <laughs> so that's just me. Cool. Oh, All right. So, so not, never mind. I got, sorry. She said it's made in China. So it wasn't handmade, but it looks, well, it's probably pan painted. So. <laughs> All right, so coming up for our next critique, uh, the topic is going to be junk drawer. Junk drawer. Everybody has one. I got one right here. I got a couple of them in the house I got to get rid of. One of them is like Fred Sanford. It's got nothing but readers in it. <laughs> 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 nothing but readers like these in there in strategic locations around the house. That's so uh, funny. Cool. So junk drawers, our next topic, that'll be next or a week from today on the 14th of March. We'll record that and stream it. Looking forward to that. Troy, any, um, any final words before we end the stream? Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm reading some of the chat and I'm getting very distracted. Um, <laughs> Multitask. Yeah, Come uh... on. <laughs> Detritus of pixels is my new favorite phrase, says La Dude Arena. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised like this is these are these are thoughts that go through my head all the time so mm -hmm. i'm just glad that i get to throw some of those out um ha have have fun with the junk tour just you know just have fun with the junk tour yeah yeah amy i don't i do not want to see i don't want to see pictures of your underwear junk drawer in the <laughs> 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 like, all white and one red pair right there in the, in the rule of thirds see there you go there you go all right. Uh, Laduna Rita says, junk drawer, is that a euphemism? No, it is not a euphemism. Uh, but you can interpret <laughs> it. You can interpret it I as guess. a euphemism. There you go. However you want to take it. There's two words. Make of them what you will. All right, folks, That's we'll leave right. it right there. Thanks for sticking with us um, for this. I know we got a little bit of a late start through, due to technical difficulties, but we're here. We're always here. Those of you that are in the community, we will see you on Friday at 6 o'clock for our weekly get together hang out hopefully my sniffles will be gone by then um and we'll we'll leave it right there all right troy thank Perfect. you thank you for your help all right thanks yeah. everybody yep and see you guys in a bit see you in the community ending the stream